Hello everyone. Just wanted to give you a quick uh, walkthrough, very quick walkthrough, hopefully it's quick anyways, uh, of how to use this layer system for your Unreal terrains. And this usually uh, will be used in lieu, uh, not in lieu, uh, in conjunction with terrains that you make in um, like Gaia or World Machine, whatever landscape generator that you use where you can export masks out of uh, this material should automatically populate it with uh, your materials based on your masks so let's go ahead and just do uh, this one and then uh, we'll go ahead and set one up by by scratch as well so here's the landscape right here uh, and when you get this landscape material uh, not landscape sorry this landscape material when you get this landscape material uh, you're going to just apply this one right here, landscape mat, use this. I, I have things worded that way, uh, very specifically, uh, so nobody's confused on what to use. Especially if you're new to Unreal. This is supposed to make things extremely easy and friendly for no new users. And from the very get-go, when you apply it, you will get a rock and grass blend material, which is very basic, and it's good for just your basic... Uh, landscape visualization purposes, but um, it's not what this material was made for. It, this material was made for um, using masks to apply other materials. So let's go ahead and open that up. And I'm going to go ahead and collapse all the parameters for the instance material. And as you can see here, we uh, we have a few things here that are being, that, that is being used on our landscape. And uh, at the very top, uh, you start here and work your way down. So it's a linear fashion. It's not, um, it's not at all something that you have to bounce around on. You can if you want. So like if, uh, later on, you can actually change the dry grass and the rock materials, which are the only two materials being used currently. But we're going to change that. So uh, in any case, just uh, work your way down and then you'll end up having a pretty good looking landscape. So by default, everything's going to be uh, checked here, but unchecked here. And if it's not checked here, just check it here. Uh, this doesn't necessarily make it true or false for these. These do. Um, so in this case, we have our landscape uh, and we are using um, our masks to texture it. So let's go ahead and check um, a couple things here. One, I have a custom color map that I want to use. So let's go ahead and check that. And that will load this in. And I'm going to clear this because this is just me testing it. Um, we're going to reload it. And then let's go ahead and check use custom masks. And you can see here we have a whole bunch of different options here now. So by default, this is what we have. Um, you'll see this right here. This is the color map that was applied to it but it's not at any specific resolution that you need to set. That's why it's not lining up and it looks like garbage. So by uh, knowing what resolution you export your landscape out at, this next option, these next options here come into play. So if you exported a uh, height map of 2017 by 2017, you would choose that. If you did 4033, you would choose that, so on and so forth. Um, and I, I went all the way up to 8129. These true and false statements right here are kind of janky, but they, they work. So if you select 2017, that will uh, update the landscape layer coordinates to apply your custom color map, your custom normal map, as well as your masks to your landscape for that resolution. But it only works if you have your landscape exported at that resolution. So in this case, it's not going to change. Uh, or it'll change, but it's not going to look proper until we set the um, the right resolution, which will be 4033 in this case, because that's what this landscape was built at. So let's go ahead and uncheck that, and you'll see that 10 uh, 1009 uh, disappeared when I selected 2017. That's because everything below your selection will disappear. So when I select 4033, all those options will disappear. Something I need to adjust when I, uh, uh, something I need to figure out and adjust when, when I'm building this out a little bit more is figure out how to get all of these resolutions to disappear when you choose one. Uh, but for the time being, just choose the resolution you export your landscape out at 
and then uh, call it good and just ignore everything else because you only need to set one. This resolution drives the, uh, or these options right here will drive the resolution and the coordinates for everything right here and your masks. Additionally, if you need additional masks for whatever reason, you can select that and you'll get two additional mask layers down here, custom one and custom two, as well as custom materials for uh, your close and far materials for one and two, and all the adjustments that come with it, as you can see there. So we'll get into that a little bit later. We don't need to worry about that right now, um, as well as uh, the, the additional masks. We don't need those for the time being, so I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect that. And, uh, disconnect that <laughs> come on there we go uh, so let's go ahead and load up our uh, color map that we have so when you are working in Gaia or world machine a lot of the times you end up making your own custom color map for your landscape and that's what I did here so I'm gonna go ahead and go into my uh, levels here and my new folder uh, that one this is my color map and if I go over if I bring this down so you can kind of see what's happening, it's not lining up because this color map is not the color map based on this landscape. This is actually the one built into the material when I was testing it for my other landscape that you that you haven't seen. So I'll go ahead and assign this material right here or this texture to this landscape because that's one that belongs. And you'll see that everything lines up now. So we have our snow where the snow should be except for in some other areas which again is being driven by the other uh, landscape materials that are kind of built into the ma material that will go away when the ships uh, it'll all be set to blanks so when you load it up you load up your own uh, mats or your own textures and masks uh, but for now the uh, the actual material is uh, landscape color map is lining up properly so let's go ahead and load up the normal map as well so that's the normal map there so oh, if I bring this down and let you guys see it hopefully it'll update in real time and you can see it and it did so that works and it's mapping properly so let's go ahead and look at these now so we have a dirt mask a stone mask a rock mask and a snow mask and this is why I have additional masks for you that you can use because um, uh, these are going to be renamed eventually but the way the layering system works is you kind of have to know what's what uh, or you have to go into the uh, material and you, the the master material and change things around and that could potentially break things and I don't want that I want I want this to be as simple as possible so for now um, what's going to end up happening is each mask has e each mask has a name and material assigned to it so this one will always be dirt this one will always be stone rock and this one will always be snow you don't have to worry about grass because the grass is being uh, implemented via the auto landscape side of it so the rock the uh, the rock on the cliffs and the grass off of the cliffs is already going to populate so you don't need to worry about the grass that one's taken care of automatically but you still have control over changing the texture for it uh, for the time being maybe I'll implement more controls for that in the future but we don't have to worry about that right now uh, so what do I want my dirt mask to be do I want it to be the deposits the flow those two are usually the best ones to choose when it comes to dirt so I think in this case I'm gonna choose flow for the dirt mask so let's go ahead and apply that and uh, you may have noticed a small change but nothing much yet uh, I'm gonna go ahead and set all of these to one as well because that I'm gonna change that around and you'll see that even when I change those around this already updated to look a little different and let's go ahead and um, make sure that we don't have another resolution checked in here it shouldn't if you do have multiple resolutions in here checked it should default to the last one in the list but I just wanted to make sure uh, now we need a stone mask and I'm going to go ahead and use the deposit for the stone mask the rock mask will be the wear mask and then the snow mask will obviously be my snow mask and I exported all of these out from Gaia 
and as you can see here it's all lining up nicely now and I, all I had to do was select you know a few different options here and then assign masks and materials here and now I'm done my landscape is um, textured completely and I don't have to go through and manually paint anything in because it's all being driven by the masks uh, you still have the option to go through and paint everything because we do have uh, blending uh, layer blends so you can go to paint and you have all the materials here that you can still paint um, so you still have that option but you don't have to so um, say we're done and we can call it good we can start populating our landscape around and with rocks and foliage and uh, making our scene and our game and it only took maybe two or three you know minutes of w without explanation for you guys just so you know what's going on it, it only really takes like two or three minutes to get it all going but say you need a, a little more fine control over your mask so like right here we have this dirt line that's from the flow um, let's say we needed to um, enhance that a bit and change that around well we do have um, the strengths of the masks built in right here so let's go ahead and look at the flow mask here I can increase the strength by just uh, changing the value here and that will update uh, and if we can go higher you can see how that's really changing now so now our landscape has a lot of variation we have dirt in the ridges and crevices where the flow mask is present and that looks pretty good that gives us additional um, texture variation and helps break up the tiling a bit more which that already the material already has that built into it uh, as well so you're not going to get a whole lot of tiling from the get-go I'm just gonna go ahead and smooth some of these shadows out because they look horrendous um, I'm not gonna worry too much about the back area there but right in this area we will all right so uh, let's get out of this mode uh, there we go so now we have dirt and grass uh, and then we also have like a green grass and a dry grass blending together as well uh, and we still have our rock on our slopes and um, everything is blending in nicely so that's just the flow mask my mouse button is almost is also broken by the way I don't know if I've mentioned that or, or not but it is indeed broken so I need to sometimes it doesn't work when I'm trying to move around I'm gonna kind of smooth these out a bit more as well too much little things going on there it's creating some bad harsh shadows that I don't like okay um, and then you can just drop yourself in the game and play around it's all game ready so uh, it all works out pretty well now you can see the flow mask being implemented there um, but we have additional masks we can look at so let's go ahead and bring in bring up the strength on these other ones so we have the uh, deposit map here and the deposits are going to be mostly down in this area because that's where the flow brought all the sedimentation down and uh, that's where it kind of came to rest so let's go ahead and increase the deposit here to uh, something like 30 you can see we're getting deposits along the edges here as well so let's increase this to 50 you can see it coming in a little bit more uh, let's do like a hundred you can see it really coming in and it's blending in nicely um, over here we're getting a lot of it because this is where all the deposits are coming down as well as over here uh, there's just big pockets of um, d stone deposits and the materials updating accordingly as you can see so uh, we still have our flow and then our deposits and our grass it's all blending but that's still like way blown out we don't need that much uh, stone so let's change that to something a little more manageable so let me find another good view here I think I think that'll work because we can see it coming in right here and up here so let's just change this from a hundred down to something like maybe 50 because we don't need that much you can see it coming in and then if we reduce it to zero now we're getting none of it as you can see and we can do that for the, the flow as well reduce that to zero and now we're getting none of the flow so you can turn the masks on and off as well uh, I don't know why you would want to but you can you can you have the power to do that by just reducing it to zero so let's go to 30 here we do have the stones coming in now uh, where not as harshly as uh, with 50 
uh, maybe 40 might work that works now let's do the rock strength here on the wear so let's go ahead and increase this to 100 because this one is rather uh, weak so you have to increase it quite a bit to see what's happening and you can see here the the wear map is a, affecting the landscape in pretty much around the entire landscape so you might have to play around with this inside of um, Gaia or World Machine or whatever that you're using before you import it here and just kind of control it a bit. So let's go ahead and reduce this to 50. <clears throat> and you can see the rock coming in still. And if we reduce it to zero, now we have none of it coming in. So let's just find one where we start seeing the rock coming in, but not taking over our landscape. So about right there. And there we go. Now uh, that is complete. For the snow mask, it is essentially a black and white mask with almost zero gray values. But you do have a snow mask strength here, and you can increase this. So essentially what you're doing is if you decrease it, all you're doing is removing, so, or I guess not creating such a harsh line. So if we go to like 0.5, we still have our mask coming in, but it might be smoother on the edges. And if we go to 0.1, uh, it's kind of coming down the, the landscape sides a little bit more. So let's go to 0.001. Um, and then we can do like 0 0.00001. And very small values is making small changes, but essentially it's going to be a zero or one. You can even go higher, you can go to five, um, but you're not gonna notice much of a change. Again, it's either gonna be black or white. So it's gonna be zero or it's gonna be uh, one. But in this case, my color map also has snow in it. So um, if I don't wanna use the color map, I don't have to. And then on this landscape, particularly through testing, it actually looks better without the color map. So let's go ahead and disable the color map by just unchecking. And now you can see the snow is gone and that's because um, the mask I essentially turned off. So let's turn that back on. And now the snow's back and there we go. Um, with that said, we also have less grass in our scene now because of our uh, erosion masks they are just a little bit too strong the color map was bringing in a lot of that grass uh, texture so let's reduce these until we uh, uh, see what we uh, like so I'm just gonna reduce some all to zero just to bring in the rock and the grass again and now I'll just slowly increase these until we get what we need so those are the flow lines coming in at five um, and then we'll just increase the stones to like I don't know, 20 or the, not 50 don't definitely don't need 50 let's do 30 I think 20 might have been better with this yeah and you can see the the maps being affected over here as well and you can see it's not impacting our snow and I'll explain that in a minute and then let's increase the rock to something that is good looking as well we it was too high before uh, we'll just uh Play around. We got the rock coming in here, so that's. I think that'll do. All right, and it updates uh, almost on the fly because it is a instanced material, so it doesn't uh, um, it doesn't take long to compile. So now it's complete. Uh, we were we have almost the same effect or same uh, coloring scheme as our uh, color map that we had before, um, and it's all being driven by these masks. So let's look at what we have else that we can do. Um, this is looking pretty good so far. And you can see the variation in the specular maps, uh, like right here and here, as I move around the landscape, which is good. OK, so say your landscape's set up the way you want it to be set up, and you are happy with that. Let's go ahead and look at some of the options that we have for our materials. And all the materials, um, save for the dry grass and the grass, have the same controls. So, and even the, even the grass has the same controls. But let's go ahead and unroll all of these parameters and we'll just look at a material real quick. Let's go ahead and just look at rock because uh, that's what I like to look at. So every material has three uh, different um, parameter groups to work with that being the adjustments the close and the far 
So you, you have the option to adjust the close texture and the far texture. And what that means is the close texture will be where you are um, or where the camera is. That like right, let's see if I can get this to, there we go. So like right here would be close and these mountains in the background would be far. The material will be scaled based on that distance. So the closer the material is to, or the texture is to the camera, the smaller that texture will be to give you good detail, but also reduce tiling. And um, the further away it is, the larger that material, that texture is. So you get a good looking material in the distance and it also helps uh, blend the, the tiling so you don't get noticeable tiling. And if we slowly transition to this rock, you can see it, or the snow even, uh, you can see it being transitioned as you look right here that is being transitioned into another material and then as we get to this rock that rock is being transitioned into the same material in this case but at a smaller resolution so it blends in kind of seamlessly as you are running towards it uh, I see some issue here let's smooth this out right here um, I do have triplanar projection so it, on the edges of your landscapes or, or on the sides, you shouldn't get much texture stretching. Um, but every once in a while, there is some texture stretching uh, because it's not a perfect triplanar. It's kind of just like a cheap option to use, but it, it works most of the time. So uh, plus that was super stretched. There's, there's going to be nothing that would have fixed that. Uh, but they are triplanar stretched or triplanar mapped. So uh, they, they, everything should look good on the, on the, on the sides so uh, but that's what that does so the adjustments is what controls that so if we look at the rock adjustments we see the rock far close blend range and the rock far close starting point so what this is saying is that uh, the starting point for where the far and the close materials kind of merge together that's set to a 5,000. And then if the blend range is high, that means that transition from that merged zone has a fall off. So it blends nice and smoothly with each other rather than having a sharp cutoff. So if I were to go back up here and remove the custom maps and just stick with the two layer blend between the rock and the grass, I can help show you what this is a little easier. I'm going to bring the landscape slope, which you have control over as well. I'm going to bring the values up to, I believe I want 30, and then I want this fall off to be like negative 20. There we go. Now we have mostly rock instead of grass, so we have all this rock material. Uh, let's roll these up. Uh, let's roll all of them up and get the rock adjustments and the rock close and far materials up. And another nice thing about this is you can have one material for a rock here for the close material and have a completely different material here. Uh, so you don't even have to stick with the same rock material. It would make sense to because you want it to be blended seamlessly together. But if you wanted like a purple rock here and a red rock back here, you, you could have that. Um, you, you have total creative freedom to make as many weird and trippy psilocybin scenes as you want. So um, you're not limited by, by anything here. Okay, so let's go up to the adjustments and let's reduce these to zero. And then I'll just start from scratch. So as you can see here, as I reduce that, we get some nasty texture going on in the front here because we have a large texture here and it looks good in the background still but that's because that's what it was scaled for um, and you'll also notice that there's no really good visual or visual visible tiling I, the variations built into the materials uh, does a really good job at hiding the tiling so let's start with the starting point because this is what we want to we want to know where exactly that starting point is going to be now I can tell you right now, in most cases, this is going to be a negative number. It'll almost never be a positive number. And the reason for that is because the math inside of the material uh, makes it so. It's using multiplication in a lot of places. Uh, so you have to use the starting point set to uh, a negative value. Uh, so in this case, we're going to go ahead and do like a negative 2000 and see if we can see that harsh cutoff. Yeah, right here. 
So that's almost directly below us. As you can see here, that is the start point right there. Now we have this smaller material and we have that larger material. Now the blend is going to take this starting point and it's going to fade it so it blends more smoothly from one material to another. So this will almost always be a positive number. So let's do a thousand and let's see how much that blends it. So blend it quite a bit. Um, we, we don't have such a harsh transition now but it's still pretty harsh there. Uh, so let's go ahead and increase this to something like uh, 10,000 and you can see that blending pretty nicely uh, at this point. So um, this is something that you're going to have to play with to get the results that you want and uh, you can spend a lot of time doing this but I can just tell you right now that the values that I found that work pretty well that gives you a pretty good natural transition is a starting point of 5000 so it starts a little further away from you and the camera and a blend range of 5000 uh, that for the the movement speed of your character in game that seems pretty good and natural but you can play with it and do whatever you want um, one more thing let's go ahead and reduce these as well one more time so let's go to negative 2000 here and let's go to just uh, zero here so we have that harsh transition because now I want to show you how these materials are going to be how you're going to increase the size of these textures and that starts right here so the rock texture close and the rock or the rock texture size close and rock texture size far Th this is what's going to control the size of your uh, textures however larger numbers means smaller texture and smaller number means uh, larger texture so you got to think of it in opposites here so if you want a small texture for your close you're going to be using higher values so instead of 0 0.05 we're going to use like 0 0.5 and see how that changes and then for the far texture we're going to use a value of 0 0.08 and you can see how that's larger here uh, we can use a text uh, a size of one here and that would be the default texture size and you'll get a lot more noticeable tiling and repetition though the variation will still come in and help break up the tiling uh, to the best of its ability but you'll at this point you'll still start seeing a lot of noticeable tiling um, and it also doesn't look as good when you're up close to your rock cliffs with this size but you could always go that low if you wanted um, if you want to go low, uh, smaller you can just go to two and you can start getting uh, a lot of small texture in there in my opinion I find a good value to be 0 0.05 um, or even 0 0.01 uh, or 0.1 I mean there we go 0.1 seems to be pretty good for your close texture um, and depending on the texture you're using if it's a good one or not uh, you, that's uh, that seems like a good value and then for the far texture I find that uh, 0 0.008 at least for this texture is pretty good uh, and then when we increase these starting and blend ranges it's going to look a lot better so let's go ahead and go back to the what I had before which was negative 5000 and then positive 5000 and now it's blending pretty well we have that close texture and now we have that far texture and it looks pretty pretty decent at this point point. and that is true for every texture that you have um, or every texture that is implemented in the material itself as well as any custom ones that you bring in will be set up that way um, for the two custom ones anyways I, I think that having six total masks is plenty I don't think you need more than that but if you do for whatever reason this is a totally modular material so you can go into the master material and add more if you want but you have to kind of know what you're doing but I'll make a video on that later because I'm not gonna I'm not gonna go around and or go ahead and do that now but um, in a later video I'll show you how to add additional masks and additional materials if you need other ones so uh, you'll be good and then of course you have your rock texture close and rock far and you can change those up to be whatever you want and these are still going to be updated with more things because right now I don't have roughness <laughs> roughness maps um, but every material uh, 
uh, except for the color material, will have these uh, strengths. So you can increase the specular, the AO, and the, the normal, and the roughness when, when the roughness is implemented. Uh, okay, so now that we um, kind of went ahead and uh, set up one material and explained the settings, and this is our final result, let's go ahead and use custom masks right there. This is our result, at least for this specific material or this landscape. Um, I'm going to go back to the defaults here. Sorry. I want to see the final result. Small values here make a huge difference too, by the way. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. This is a a material being applied by a mask so we're not going to get much grass on the slopes um, that's what we ended up with so now let's go ahead and uh, I'll end this video by just setting up one more landscape and assigning this material to it and then building it out and you can see how just how stupid easy and fast it is to use so I made a level here this new world one I let's go ahead and open that up and I'm not going to save anything here because this actually isn't going to be shipped this scene right here isn't actually going to be shipped with it. It's going to be the one that I was working on originally. Um, so I'm not going to worry about that. And let's go ahead and add a directional light. And uh, we'll make it movable, I suppose. We don't doesn't really matter right now. Let's add a skylight. Let's go to visual effects. We're going to add a sky atmosphere. And we're also going to add a exponential height fog. And let's go to our directional light. If you, ha if you don't have the advanced options open for your, uh, your light options here, go ahead and unroll that and select Atmosphere Fog Sun Light. And now our light sun will interact properly with that new sky atmosphere model. All right. Now let's uh, go to Modes, Landscape, and we're going to import from File. And I'm going to go ahead and import a new one that I built just recently just for this and it's going to be this snow final and let's go ahead and import and just by default I'm gonna go ahead and disable the exponential height fog for just a moment because it's gonna be a little bit too much until we can play with it so this is a, another landscape that I made just to show you guys how simple it will be to set up but it comes in kinda of flat uh, into Unreal. So what we need to do is uh, go to our landscape and in the scales here I need to increase the Z to something like 250. There we go. Now that should stupid mouse. Now that should give me the proper size. So when I come down here and look up we can see we got a mountain scape uh, with some edges and cliffs and whatnot. And this really flat area up here is all snow. So this is the snow uh, erosion, um, and that's the snow model being uh, implemented. So um, maybe we'll go a little higher. Let's go to 270, just so it has a little bit more height variation. We don't want too much because we do have these tiny cliffs right here that we don't want to kind of blow out of proportion. All right, so we have our landscape. Now, just like before, because I was working on it, showing you guys how it's working, um, how it works, I'm going to have the old masks applied to it. So let's go ahead and apply the landscape material here. Let's open that up. And before we do anything else, we need to... Uh, go back to the levels new folder and I need to bring in my materials uh, my, my masks and whatnot for this so it's gonna be here and I need to bring in the color map erosion 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 normal and snow. bring those in and I'm gonna show you one more thing while those are being imported there we go now I should import them Yep, that's important. See it down here. All right. One more thing to show you before we get started is your masks. Let's go ahead and open up all of these. And you want to make sure that they don't 
aren't set to sRGB, and Unreal is pretty good at understanding if it's a uh, if it's sRGB or not. But just open them up and double check. And then also the compression settings right here. Go ahead and put those to uh, masks for all of them, and make sure you save afterwards. So uncheck sRGB for your masks. Any grayscale maps always come in here and uncheck those even for textures and whatnot and then just uh, for these specifically set them to mask and uh, mask and the last one right here will be mask <coughs> there we go alright so now that's properly set up uh, and you don't have to do that it'll still work but um, it just helps with uh, your optimization so uh, you don't necessarily have to do that all right so in this case this this landscape is again 4033 so I'm going to keep that checked I'm going to use custom masks and let's go ahead and load up my normal map uh, the flow map I'm going to keep the same let's go ahead and put the flow map here and the deposits here and the wear here and then the snow here and now it lines up nice and proper and now we have materials where the materials should be all right and let's go ahead and load up our custom color map as well so let's choose that and bring that in there we go uh, if you think that the custom color map is just a little too bright um, you can always color correct it in a different program or uh, remake it inside of Gaia or World Machine or World Creator or whatever. But what I do is I just go into the color map here and I just reduce the the brightness here to about 0.6. And that gives it a little bit more dark tone to it or we can even do like 0.5. You can go lower, it doesn't really matter. Um, and then it's not really going to affect the snow in this case because your snow mask is covering that up. So all you're really doing is increasing or decreasing the brightness for your grass and rock. So that's it. That's how simple it is. So now we have all of our materials being assigned properly where they should be assigned. Um, and there's absolutely nothing else that needs to be done, at least in this case. Uh, you can be as um, nitpicky about it as you want, really. So the, the main thing here is if you make good masks uh, within uh, Gaia or World Machine or your terrain generator. So the better your masks are, the, uh, the more likely it is that you're going to um, have good looking materials so just keep that in mind and I need my uh, I need my exponential height fog to be here since reduce these and where's my uh, where's the gizmo oh I need a uh, there we go Let's see if we can find the gizmo now it's gonna be here by me yeah all right so I just want to set up a really just kind of good looking shot here real quick before we do anything I will go about right there. There we go. And uh, if you use Control L, you can move the sunlight around like this. And uh, this isn't going to be like a tutorial on how to light up your scene and whatnot. It was, it's going to be mostly your uh, how to set up the, the material system. So uh, I think that will look all right for the time being. And then we can recapture this. There we go. Uh, and now we're all set. And that literally only took like two minutes, two or three minutes the the set up the materials and or the, the masks and whatnot and now we're done. So if you have any questions um, or if you have anything that you want to have added to this please let me know. I hope you uh, support my efforts by purchasing this. I uh, In the past I offered a lot of stuff for free but I, uh, I'm really going to start pushing for a more monetary system. I need um, assistance with uh, money and whatnot so uh, I don't want to beg but if you find that you'll end up using this quite a, quite a bit or or if you want that kind of freedom to use your materials uh, attach the masks this might be your solution uh, just hit me up with uh, anything that uh, you want to critique on it and then I'll see what I can do so thank you for watching and I will see you in the uh, uh, the next video